Alright, so you guys know I bought this uh, rig, the whole motorhome, thinking, well, you know, you saw in that first video where I gave a tour of it, and I was thinking that it was more or less complete, and then I'd be able to just start camping in it and changing things from the original layout, uh, you know, piecemeal, one, one thing at a time, uh, until I got the rig to where I wanted it, you know? So uh, that just turned out to really not be the case, and... What was I thinking? 40 year old motorhome, of course it's not gonna be, uh, you know, ready to go. And, you know, I've, since I bought this, I've kind of become knowledgeable on these motorhomes and I've been researching them online, looking up all the other, you know, uh, coaches that are available, like on Craigslist, um, all over the country, uh, you know, from Los Angeles out to Wisconsin and, and uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest. And one thing that does seem to be uh, common to these rigs is that they all have that moldy, musty smell. And that's a common thing to all motorhomes, but most motorhomes have a different uh, roof construction where it's this sort of like cheap Luan even, or just a cheap plywood uh, with some sort of a, maybe a metal covering over it, like a really thin, uh, you know, sheet metal, almost a foil covering that or uh, over some mastic or something. But uh, with, with the coaches here, with the GMC motorhomes, it's actually, a piece of sheet metal, uh, aluminum sheet metal, and it joins outside uh, with the sh with the vertical sheet metal. I mean, it's all rounded, but there's there's the vertical and there's the roof piece, and they are joined, and there's a lap uh, joint there. So there's a, a, a trim piece that covers that, and um, apparently the the waterproofing, the sealant underneath that trim piece fails eventually after 40 years, especially in uh, conditions where it freezes. So you'll get rain that, that ends up underneath there and then it freezes and that, that ice expands which breaks the, um, you know, the seal on the waterproofing even further. So this definitely, this motorhome lived uh, in the desert up there in eastern Washington so uh, that's what happened. So I am just getting buckets and buckets of water in the back of the motorhome um, every time it rains and so that's clearly what's happening it's a big collection system you know an unintentional collection system where all of the rain uh from the whole roof um sort of finds its way to those rails and then gravity drives it back where it finds a hole and, and drips down inside the coach so no good definitely want to uh solve that problem and so that's what we're going to do uh here in this video and um if i had known that this sort of an issue which is a really large issue uh, was going to be uh, part of this motorhome, I definitely would have um, bargained the price down a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that this motorhome is special in, in this regard, where it's, uh, <laughs> I think that, like, basically all of them. So if you're going to go buy one of these coaches, uh, make sure that you get a whiff of that smell and ask them if they've uh, addressed this issue, because I didn't even know this was the source of the issue until I talked to Jim Bounds. He's the, uh, you know, he has done many, many of these coaches there in Florida, so... Um, yeah, anyway, just something to be aware of that this is a massive uh, problem that's common to these motorhomes. So uh, you're going to have to address this issue, most likely, if you get one of these. All right, let's dive into the work and see if we can't solve this problem. So I have 50 of these uh, Torx head bolts holding this um, cover piece of aluminum uh, onto the onto the motorhome. This piece has 25 and the, the one over there on the other side also has 25. And you can see that I've removed this one right here, which isn't isn't too much of a problem. So this one came out and we're gonna talk about that in just a second, we're gonna talk about that bolt. But right now I've got this drill bit and we can see, see that one's been pulled out. And look at, there's no something on there. But hey, I broke the head off of that one. I broke the head off of that one. So two thirds of the bolts are gonna have the heads breaking off of them. And that is one heck of a problem to overcome. So we can look at this bolt here. It's got this tri-lobe profile, which means it was kind of a self-tapping deal, sort of a precursor to the self-tapping screws that we have uh, today. And you can see because it's rusted that this is steel and it's going into aluminum. So we have dissimilar metals there and we're gonna get what's it called, the um, galvanic or corrosion happening. And uh, yeah, that's why we're breaking off heads. Each one of these broken like this might end up being like an hour long fight to get it out, uh, to get the, the shaft out of there, out of the hole. I do not want to have to be fighting with broken bolt heads. Ugh, ugh. Well, uh, these seem to be coming out okay. I don't even know how I'm gonna access the, uh, the actual shank once the, 
once this piece comes off. I don't know if I'll even be able to get to the shank. So uh, we all know how difficult it is drilling holes in steel without it wandering off the steel and into the aluminum. So this is heck of a problem and I broke another one so now I have four of them to deal with so far. All right, well there's my trim piece sitting on top of my trailer and here is the mess that I've got to clean up. So I gotta get all this old spooge caulking butyl type, I don't even think it's butyl. It's pretty sticky, it's almost like, it must be butyl, yeah that's gotta be butyl. By the way, for everybody who was kind of critical in the past videos about uh, my use of this, basically it's a, what is it, asphalt type caulking, you know, seam sealer is what it's called. And it's from the automotive industry. But this is sandable and paintable. See? So it's kind of rubbery, but I can still sand it flat. So that it's almost like a body filler, and you can paint right over it. So it was, I think, a good, a decent solution uh, for, that, for that seam. So this is where I was breaking off those uh, bolt heads. It's a broken one there, a broken one there. Um, and you can see all through here, the, um, the butyl has turned to dirt, or the dirt has just seeped in underneath. Uh, and so I'm having to scrape it. But I think this is probably most likely the area where the leak uh, is happening. So the, the water is seeping in here, running down this channel all the way down to the back and then dripping in through the back. Okay, so it's possible that water is wicking up in, it, in this location here. Um, it could, the water could be flowing down the roof and then just with you know wicking action, be getting sucked back up, up there, even though this is a downslope. As long as I make a good seal here along this dark line with the butyl tape, uh, I think it'll be okay. You see that? That's the hole. So water was traveling all the way down this channel and then going into that hole and then dripping inside of there. <clears throat> yeah, this is the kind of work that nobody wants to do. But you just have to do it. Step one, use the cutoff wheel on the Dremel tool to grind the uh, shank flat down there inside the groove. This is a hardened carbide insert drill bit from the Home Depot. It cost me like six bucks or something like that, maybe even like eight dollars for this single bit. But it drills through this um, hardened, you know, bolt pretty well. The problem is getting it centered and um, yeah, it's kind of wandering off as, you know, Anybody who's ever tried to drill out a steel bolt in aluminum knows the um, the bit tends to wander off the bolt and into the softer aluminum on the side. So I'm having to kind of constantly aim it. So I'm not I'm not able to drill right down through the center of the shaft. I'm kind of having to drill sideways to keep it aimed right down the center of that bolt shaft. So yeah, once this one's done, I got three more to go. And we can see by the time I got to the bottom of this hole, I was only halfway on the steel bolt. And, the rest was aluminum that I was drilling out. Finishing out the hole with this die grinder bit on my Dremel tool, I think I can get the bolt in there now. Hmm, that'll do. All right, so this uh, this new wheel is a bit softer. The durometer, you can see how much it deflects there when I, when I go to push on the drill, see how much it just sort of bends out of the way. And it is working. I had some softer durometer wheels that wouldn't even strip the, uh, the vinyl off. But you can see quite a difference. See, this is the, um, well, there's overspray here. You see the, the, uh, the dust from what I was just working on. But yeah, see what it looks like here? That was what the harder wheel did. And then here, we've got these waves of sticky. This is the, the glue that holds the vinyl there, as well as, you know, there's some coloration coming from the, uh, the vinyl itself. And I can scrape this off with my fingernails where it's thick, but I'm gonna have to put a uh, like some acetone or something to really uh, clean off this residual stuff that's left behind. Anyway, the uh, the stripe is pretty much all removed except I've got a little bit left uh, there around the back. Now I need to remove these ladder supports and take the spare tire off so I can get the last of this uh, lower stripe removed, and then. I get to move to the upper stripe up there. Take that off all the way around the coach too. You can see 
where I'm currently at, the status of, of removal. So I've removed all the way across the back, and yesterday I was here with my ladder set up here at the back of the, of the bus, and my driveway, in case you can't tell, is on a bit of a slope. So that is straight ahead, so it, it goes up quite a bit there. So uh, I was sitting back here with the ladder, and I was watching through the back window there, because my kid, who's, you know, two years old, loves to pretend like he's driving the bus. Look at this kiddo. So I was able to keep an eye on him through the window while he got to play. But then I saw him and he was starting to touch this thing right here, the gear shifter. And I wanted to show him not to touch that. So here we are, let's put the emergency brake on. Oh, that takes quite a bit of force there. That is fully on and judging by the amount of force that really should be uh, doing its job as an e-brake. We got, we got the family in the bus with us. In the, in the motorhome here, and there's no key in the ignition. So remember my driveway is on a hill, but nothing should happen here. The kids should be safe to play here at the dashboard. So let's just, you see that? We're rolling. It pops out of park without the key. There's enough wiggle there. So potential disaster when I was working back behind there yesterday if the kid had done that. Uh, what you just saw there is I rolled back to the blocks. I've got the chocks under the wheels. So that's what saved us just now. That could have been really bad, huh? Yay. <laughs> See, here's the keys. Let's take a minute to talk about uh, the body work that I've done. So you can see here, uh, I've mostly finished this, the most challenging portion of the bodywork, and this will be, uh, you know, you won't even be able to tell it was damaged when everything's painted and all assembled. As I've shown previously, I'm using this um, Pro Glass body filler. Uh, any SMC rated body filler would work, but um, you know, this is basically like an old Corvette. It's got that sheet molded compound um, fiberglass. Uh, and so you can't just use regular Bondo on it. So um, that one little can has been all that I've needed to do the repairs that I've done. You can see I've got a little bit of a depression right through here, that Sharpie outline. That's where I wanna do my final application here. And um, yeah, I've got this section here, which is complete. You wouldn't even be able to tell that that was ever damaged once paint gets applied. And of course, there is um, another dent on the opposite side of the motorhome which I, I did not, I'm not responsible for that one, and this little dent here. So almost all this damage uh, on this panel was caused by me with that uh, awning when I had that mishap. But it's, uh, it's all been repaired at least to a level where it blends in with the current state of affairs on the motorhome. You can see the, uh, the side is a bit ripply. There's, um, it's, it's not perfect. It's not perfectly flat and perfectly straight. So you'll never even notice. Uh, when it's all painted that I had damaged it. So the body work, mostly done. And hopefully, you know, if, if you guys are watching this because you think you're gonna embark on one of these projects, uh, you'll probably get a coach which is straight and doesn't even need uh, to be repaired like that. All right, well, that's all the work I was able to get done for this video. Uh, tune in next time when we hopefully finish up this job. See you then, thanks for watching. <laughs> Yeah, don't fall. Okay, here's your eye protection. Are you are you helping Dad clean the motorhome on the outside? Yeah, wipe off that dust. Good job, kiddo. High five. There you go. That's a good one.